على إشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we conclude in, as we continue in the tafsir of Surah Luqman, we concluded the talk on the amusement speech. And now we move on to another segment in the verse, another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the mu'mineen, the believers. Allah says in the Quran, إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات النعيم خالدين فيها وعد الله حقا وهو العزيز الحكيم So after talking about the group of people that go after the amusement speech, the lahu, now the Qur'an shifts back to the mu'mineen, to the believers, those who have believed and those who accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them, they are the ones who have faith and do good deeds. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ They are the ones who have faith in Allah and they do good deeds. Lahum Jannatun Naim. They have the heavens of bliss. They have paradise. Now, this brings us to a very important discussion, and that is that Iman, faith in God, and Amal Salih, and action, putting faith into action, they're, all, they're always together. They're joined at the hip, meaning that faith is inseparable from action and action should not be separated from faith, real action. So we see that throughout the Qur'an, in many chapters in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly talks about iman and good deeds. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You always find this in the Qur'an. When you're reciting the Qur'an, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believe and do good deeds. Because faith on its own is not enough. And good deeds without faith, good deeds that are not backed by faith, that are not done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is also not enough. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in several times in the Qur'an, reminds us that these two are always together, Iman and Amal Salih, good deeds. وَالْعَصْرِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Indeed, by time, man, the human is in loss, except those who have faith, those who believe, and do good deeds. And tawasaw bil haq, tawasaw bil sabr, stand for what is right, and be are patient. Those are the ones who are victorious. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا." The one who has true faith in Allah, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ the one who is waiting to meet their Lord when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with him, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be pleased with this person and merciful with this person, what does this person have to do? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let this person do good deeds. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And that good deed, that amal salih, it should be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should not be for anyone or anything else. It shouldn't be for idols and it shouldn't be for other people as well. Because actions that are for the sake of other people, that has a type of riya in it. That has a type of shirk, shirk al-khafi, hidden, hidden, 
associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something that is hidden in the hearts of even the believers. So we have to be very careful that our actions and our deeds and everything that we do is purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ طُوبَى لَهُمْ وَحُسْنَ مَآبِ those who have iman and they do good deeds, they do righteous deeds, Tuba lahum. Tuba is a name of a tree in paradise. Tuba lahum wa husna ma'ab. In another verse, Allah says in the Quran, Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'minun. Fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyibah. Whoever does good deeds, whether male or female, من ذكر أو أنثى, and they are believers, they believe. Their good deeds, they are as a result of their faith. Their good deeds reflect on their faith. Tra- their, their faith translates into good deeds. What will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with these people? فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً We will resurrect this person in a good life. This person will have a good life in this life and in the afterlife Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with this person. Now someone might ask, why is there an insistence in the Qur'an on action? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want me to put my faith into action? I could just believe in God. I believe. I have faith. My faith is in my heart. What do my actions have to do with my faith? I don't want to have to pray. I don't want to give charity. I don't want to go to Hajj. I don't want to fast. But I believe in God. This is what a lot of people say. There are a lot of people, they say, I believe in God. But I don't want that faith to restrict my lifestyle. I don't want that faith to control me and put perimeters around my life. But my dear brothers and sisters, having faith is not enough. Our faith must be reflected by our actions. Our faith must be translated into good deeds. Believing without showing that you believe. How are you going to show that you believe? It doesn't make sense. In order to prove your faith to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to show that faith. You need to show that faith by following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by connecting with Allah, by obeying the commands of Allah, by obeying the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum. If you love God, then you have to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Then God will love you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, Anyone could reach God, anyone could love God, God will be in the heart of anyone. But just like everything in life, if you want to apply for a school, you want to apply for a job, anything that you want to do, there are some conditions, there are some prerequisites that you have to meet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the same. Allah tells us, worship me in the way that I want to be worshipped, not the way that you want to worship. Because when you say, I have faith, and I don't need to show that, I don't need to pray, I don't need to fast, I don't need to do this, and God knows what's in my heart, then that means you're telling Allah, I I will worship you in the way I want to be worshipped. And in essence, that is a person worshipping their own desires. That is someone following their own desires, what they want. They're not doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering them to do. We do this in our lives. When we love someone, when we care for someone, don't we show that love? Don't we speak that love? Don't we tell that person that we love them or we show that we love them? Imagine a husband loves his wife or a wife loves her husband, but they don't show any, uh, their love. They don't express it in any way whatsoever. That's not going to be proof of the love. How are you going to prove that you love a person You prove that through showing, through acts of love, through gestures of love, through the language of love. We do the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your faith, your iman, and the amal al-salih, and the good deeds, which show and prove your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you pray, you're talking to God. 
Don't you love to talk to the one? Don't you want to talk to the one that you love? When you go to Hajj, you're visiting the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you love to visit the home and the house of the one who you love? When you do Amr bil ma'roof and nahi an al munkar, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, you're calling people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're inviting people to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what Amal Salih is. Amal Salih is when you pray, when you fast, when you go to Hajj, when you follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, Amal Salih, good deeds are not confined and they are not restricted only to acts of worship. They're not limited to acts of worship. You need to do more than acts of worship in order to be doing righteous deeds, in order to have amal salih. What do you need to do? One of the greatest things that we are ordered to do as Muslims and our religion instructs us to do is to care for people, to care for humanity, to show love to individuals, to care for your family, to have salat rahim with your parents, to show love and care for your neighbors, to people around you, to respect people, to give people their rights. This is also amal salih. This is also showing care for other people. A believer, a mu'min is not someone who says, I need to just pray and that's enough. I fast and that's enough. I go to hajj and that's enough. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you how you dealt with people around you. What did you offer to people around you? This is what we have to do. Why do we need to do that? Why do I need to show love to people around me? Why do I need to express, how, uh, show gratitude and show service to people? Why? Because this is, these are the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rahim? Isn't God the merciful? So when I am merciful with others, then I am doing, I am following in a quality that is a great quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says in a hadith, he says, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ الله. If you want to reach the highest, Potential, if you want to maximize your faith, then you need to have the qualities of God be in you. What are those qualities of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim. Allah is merciful. So you need to be merciful with others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. So you be forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compassionate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truthful. He's honest. Let us be honest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the needy. Do I give the needy? He is the generous one. Am I generous? These are the akhlaq that we need to incorporate in our lives and we need to make them be a part of our lives. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, Al-khalq kulluhum iyalullah. The creation it is all the ayal of Allah. It is the family of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for all of the creation. Allah nurtures everyone. Allah protects everyone. Allah has guided everyone. الخلق كلهم عيال الله فأحبهم إلى الله عز وجل أنفعهم لعياله. So the one who God loves the most is the one who cares for the family of God. Who is the family? The creation. Meaning that the one who shows service to people is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most. And this is one of the greatest ways of showing your faith and showing that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you care for others, when you, when you do not oppress others, when you help those who are in need, community service, helping out. Imagine... If you have a son or a daughter, you have a child, and the neighbor or someone that you know comes and shows love and cares for your child, aren't you going to have greater respect for that person that loved and showed care for your child? Yes, because you have a duty to take care of your child. And when someone is supporting you in that, when someone is helping you in that, you're going to love that person. 
This is the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-khalqu iyalullah. So the one who helps the creation and supports the creation is the one who's the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith from the 10th Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam he says, خِصْلَتَانْ لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُمَا شَيْءٍ الْإِيمَانْ بِاللَّهِ وَنَفْعِ الْإِخْوَانِ Two qualities that nothing comes above them. Meaning they are the greatest of qualities. What are they? Al-Iman Billah, believing in God. This is faith that is in your heart. This is the faith that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how much faith you have in your heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خِصْلَتَانْ لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُمَا شَيْءٍ الْإِيمَان بِاللَّهِ وَنَفْعُ الْإِخْوَانِ And helping out your brothers, helping out your sisters, helping out peop- your brothers in faith. Helping out people, being a person who's productive. There are some people, they are blessed wherever they go. They are mubarak wherever they go. Baraka, what is baraka? When we say Ramadan mubarak to you, when you tell your friend, when you tell another Muslim Ramadan mubarak, what does that mean? That means, inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you maximize, so that you have as much benefit during this month of Ramadan. Sometimes someone could be Mubarak during the month of Ramadan. And there are other people, they're Mubarak wherever they go. Where, whoever they touch, wherever they go, they bring blessings. This is one of the qualities of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Jesus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا I am the slave of God. He gave me the book and he made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّةً And he made me mubarak, blessed wherever I go. And then he ordered me to pray and give zakat as long as I'm alive. We have a duty, my dear brothers and sisters, if we want to follow the prophets, if we want to follow the Ahlul Bayt, if we want to follow the righteous, then we have to be blessed beings wherever we go. Let your khair reach everywhere you go. Go and give, help out, do as much good as you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that. Maybe sometimes people won't appreciate what you do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always appreciate everything that you do. And the service to others, this is the best act of righteousness, amal salih. In a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, he says, مَنْ مَشَى فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ سَاعَةِ مِنْ لَيْلٍ أَوْ نَهَارٍ قَضَاهَا أَوْ لَمْ يَقْضِهَا كَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ مِنْ اِعْتِكَافِ شَهْرَيْنِ The one who strives one hour from the day or the night to help the hajah, the need of another person, to fulfill the need of another person. Now whether you were able to help this person or not, you were successful or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward of someone who is doing i'tikaf for two months. What is i'tikaf? I'tikaf means fasting and spending the whole time in the masjid. I'tikaf is three days. Imagine someone who's doing that for two months. This is if you take one hour. One hour you strive. You have a friend, you have someone who's in need, you try to help this person. Sometimes you're able to and sometimes you're not able to. Sometimes you can't help yourself, but you guide this person to some to someone who can help. Some you guide someone, you say, I can't help you, but I know that this person is able to help you. I'm going to direct you to this person. I'm going to ask this person to help you. In another hadith, Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he says, Tanafasu. في في المعروف لإخوانكم. Compete towards helping your إخوان, towards helping your brothers and sisters in faith. وكونوا من أهله فإن للجنة بابا يقال له المعروف. Be from the people of معروف. Be from the people 
of the good, those who help out others. Because in paradise, there's a door that is for the ma'roof. In paradise, there's a door that the, only the ones who help out others, they enter from that door. لا يدخله إلا من اصطنع المعروف في الحياة الدنيا فإن العبد لا يمشي في حاجة أخيه المؤمن فيوكل الله به ملكين أحدا عن يمينه وأخرى عن شماله يستغفران له ربه ويدعوان بقضاء حاجته. If you do that, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will allow you to enter from that door that is called Al-Ma'roof. And the one who helps out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you two angels that will help you out in your life, in your matters of life. And they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. They will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on you. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we have narrations which say that faith, and of course the Qur'an, faith and good deeds, they are attached to one another. They are joined to one another. You cannot do good deeds without faith, and you cannot have faith without good deeds. Al-Iman, wal, in the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, Al-Iman wal-Amal akhawan sharikan la yaqbal Allah ahaduhuma illa bisahibih. Rasulullah says, Amal and Iman, righteous deeds and faith, they are brothers that are joined, conjoined brothers. Meaning that they're attached to one another. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept one without the other. Meaning if you have faith, Allah is going to ask you where's your actions. And if you have actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you where's the faith. What was the drive that you were doing it for? If you were doing it for people, the people will reward you. If you are doing it for power, for prestige in this dunya, you will have the prestige in this dunya. But if you are doing it for Allah, maybe no one saw. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnessed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that. In another hadith, Rasulullah says, لا يقبل إيمان بلا عمل ولا عمل بلا إيمان Actions are not accepted without faith and faith is not accepted without action. Now someone might come and say, what about all those good people? Those good people out there, they don't necessarily believe in God, but they give charity, they help out, they do so much good, they help out non-profits and organizations. What do, we, what do we say about those people? First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, this is something that we need to make it be a part of our lives. We are in no position to judge other people. Who can measure the iman that's in the heart of a person? Can I measure? Can you measure? We don't know how much iman is in the heart of a person. So we are not in a position to come and say, this person does not have iman, this person is going to heaven, this person is going to hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows how much iman you have in your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide whether you go to heaven or hell. It's none of our business and we don't decide that. And so we shouldn't even talk about that. There are some people, when someone dies, when someone, anything happens, they sit and they talk for hours, this person's going to heaven, this person's going to hell. Who are you to come and judge on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, we have some criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But let me start implementing those criteria on myself before I implement it on other people. How do I know what's in the heart of other people? Maybe someone does have iman. Maybe someone is doing good. Maybe someone does believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're not in a position to judge other people and whether someone goes to heaven or goes to hell. And then scholars have also said that anyone who helps out humanity anyone who is sincere in helping out other people, your help for other people, this is in a way going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing it for Allah. If you're not doing it for yourself, if you're not doing it for prestige, if you're not doing it for fame, you're doing it for the sake and the purpose of humanity, that means you believe in a higher purpose. That means you believe in higher principles. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives every single one of us 
So would he not give the one who helps out other people? Allah says in the Quran, uh, in, in a dua, in the dua that we recite in the, in the month of Rajab, Ya man yu'ti man sa'alah, Ya man yu'ti man lam yas'alhu wa man lam ya'rif, tahannunan minhu wa rahmah. Allah is the one who gives those who ask Him, and He gives those who do not ask Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives every single one of us. So Allah knows what's in the heart and Allah will give. It is said that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he used to, one of the qualities of Prophet Ibrahim is that he used to stand out and whenever he cooks food, he used to stand out on the street and he used to wait for people passing by. Once they pass by, then he would invite them to come and eat with him. And the hadith says one of the reasons he became Khalilullah, the friend of God, is because of the it'am ta'am, because feeding people, that made him the friend of God. So Prophet Ibrahim, he found a man, he brought him home, he invited him, he's about to eat. Prophet Ibrahim, he says, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, that man doesn't say anything. So Ibrahim, he asks him, you don't want to say the name of your Lord? You don't want to say the name of God? That man says, I don't believe in God. So Prophet Ibrahim, because of his strong faith and attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells that man, then you're not invited to eat with me. God gave you all of these blessings and you're ungrateful for them, you're not invited to eat with me. The man says, you invited me and now you're uninviting me. He got up and he left. As soon as that, that man left, Jibra'il comes to Ibrahim and he delivers the words of Allah. Allah tells Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, I've been feeding this man his whole life. His whole life I've been giving him. Not once did I tell him you have to say this and you have to say that. I've been giving this person. Now one time you were coming to feed this person and you kicked this person out, go and bring this person back. Go and bring this person back and feed him. So Ibrahim, he runs after that man. He brings that man. The man is surprised. He says, he says, who, what brought you back? Ibrahim says, my Lord that you refuse to accept is the Lord of love. He's the Lord of compassion. He's the one who shows you love even when you don't show him love. He ordered me to come and invite you back. Then that man says, then that Lord is a Lord that is worthy of being worshipped. And he turned to Iman and he began to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, yes, there are some people who they do good deeds, but they reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are adamant in their lack of faith and they refuse to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah do with these people? Here, these people, because we believe Allah is adil, Allah is just, Allah does not oppress anyone. If you've done an act of good, you will see the reward for it. But you will see the reward in this dunya. If someone does not believe in the afterlife, they don't believe in heaven, does it make sense for them to be re receiving the reward of heaven? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the reward in this dunya. Fir'aun, Pharaoh, he became the Pharaoh, he became a ruler. One of the reasons, there's a hadith that says that one of the reasons why Pharaoh, he lived for quite some time is because of the good that he used to do. He used to, because he believed he was God, so he used to slaughter sheep every day and he used to feed people. So in a day, every day he used to, uh, he used to, he used to um, sacrifice sheep and he used to, he used to feed people. So... He started cutting down, so his, his ministers, they come and they tell him, they tell him, cut down, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to sacrifice 365 sheep a day. So he started cutting down every day one, every day one, every day one, until the last day of his life, he sacrificed one and he fed people. Then the day he did not have anything to sacrifice, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended his life. So the good that you do, you might see the reward for it in this life if you're not a believer in the Akhirah. But the one who believes in the Akhirah, they will see the reward in this life and in the afterlife. Now,
Continuing the verse, Allah says in the Quran, إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات نعيم خالدين فيها وعد الله حقا وهو العزيز الحكيم. So وعد الله حقا. Allah subhanahu wa taala will place the mu'minin, those who have good deeds and good action. Allah subhanahu wa taala will place this person in the gardens of pleasure. The real pleasure, the real Jannah is in the afterlife. That's the real pleasure. All pleasures in this life, they're nothing. They're so insignificant compared to the afterlife. This life, the pleasures are limited. They're timely. They finish very quickly. All of the beautiful places that you've seen. What is Hawaii? What is Bora Bora? What are the Maldives? These are nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to offer in heaven. Because in heaven, there's one thing that it's not here. That is that it's for eternity. Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبْ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ The real hayat, the real hayawan, hayat, is... In the Akhirah, this life is lahun wa la'ib, this life is distraction, this life is games, it comes to an end. And the reason why that life is eternal, because that life is khalidina fiha, wa'da Allahi haqqan, wa huwa al-azizul hakim. In paradise, you are eternalized. For eternity, you will be in paradise. Now of course, everyone who enters into paradise, the moment they step foot into paradise, they will be eternalized in it. Once you go in, you can't come out. But those who enter into the hellfire, they're in two groups. One group Allah describes as khalidina fiha, mukhalladin, they will be eternalized in it. And another group, they will be cleansed for some time, and then they will be taken out. Who are the ones who are eternalized in the hellfire? Imam Ali, he says in Dua Kumail, وَأَقْسَمْتَ أَن تَمْلَأَهَا مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَأَن تُخَلِّدَ فِيهَا الْمُعَانِدِينَ And you will eternalize in the hellfire those who are mu'anideen, those who are adamant, those who are arrogant, and those who continue in the wrong knowing that they are wrong. Jahadu biha. Those who they continue in the wrong path, knowing that this is the wrong path, those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will eternalize. Now, someone might ask, why, where's the justice of Allah when God eternalizes people in heaven or eternalizes people in the hellfire? Someone did good, for example, someone was living a life of sin and vices. The last 10 years of their life, the last year of their life, they repented, they changed their life around. Now this person deserves paradise and they're going to be eternalized in paradise for one year, for whatever time that they did good out of their whole life. Or the, on the other side, someone who, who did bad, someone who died in the evil, died in the haram, in the lack of faith. Maybe they didn't believe for 40, 50, 60, 80 years. 80 years they were disobeying Allah. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eternalize them? into the hellfire. The answer is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intentions of every single person. Allah knows what's in my heart and what's in your heart. And Allah knows that the intention of the mu'min is that the mu'min will continue believing even if they lived for eternity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intention of the kafir that they will continue in the disbelief and in the oppression, even if they last for eternity. Allah says, and Allah describes in the Quran that the kuffar, they tell Allah, let us go back to the life so that we could start all over again. Allah says, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُوا عَنْهِ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ If they were to be taken back, they would go back to the things that we forbade them from doing. Things that we ordered them not to do. So with this we understand, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Your actions are based on your intentions. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the heart. Allah knows your faith and the amal salih, the good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for the deed and for the intention. Now someone says, I want to do good deeds. I want to feed people. I want to feed orphans. I want to do this and I want to do that. But I can't. I could only do so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do whatever you can. And the rest, I will reward you based on your intentions. Allah doesn't look at the quantity of action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the quality of our actions. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessings of this holy month to purify our actions and purify our intentions and make us be from the ones who have good deeds, have faith, and they have amal salih, righteous deeds. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دينا كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين وأغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتح مع الصلوات